also did my review of Record of Lodos War. Lodos has been licensed rescued by Funimation, with the original OVA getting a DVD and Blu-ray release, and the TV series also getting a DVD release, all in one big boxed set. This is currently available for pre-order, and I've put a referral link in the show notes for Amazon and Write Stuff if you want to pick this up. Now, with this in mind, I figured this week would be a very good time to cover another out-of-print anime that I think is in need of a little more love. So, real robot anime has varying strikes of, of realism. Something like Zeta Gundam tends to be more grounded in reality than Mazinger Z or Godinar, but it still leaves to- leans toward the fantastic with new types and how they're basically psychics and that sort of thing. Now, in the early 1980s, writer and director Ryosuke Takahashi put together a real robot series that would probably be one of the most grounded works of the genre for years to come, at least until Pat Labor came out. And that show was Armored Trippered Votoms. The series is set in the distant galaxy of Astralgus and features its signature mecha, the Armored Trooper, or AT suit. As opposed to the mecha from Gundam on Macross, the Armored Trooper is basically just a suit of power armor, providing little, a little more strength, a little more mobility, and a little more firepower than a soldier on their own. However, as the war between the two major powers in this galaxy has progressed, Weapons have progressed to an alpha degree to counter the Armored Trooper. Honestly, as things exist in this universe as of the start of the series, the only real reason people still use Armored Troopers is because the survivability of combat without the suit is still lower than survivability with the suit. The show itself follows Shiriko Kyuvi, an AT pilot for the nation of the Gilgamesh Confederation, which is at war with the Ballarat Union for reasons that everyone has forgotten. Shiriko is sent on the raid to what is thought to be a Ballarat outpost, but he discovers the outpost appears to be operated by his own side, and there he finds a beautiful woman in some sort of stasis pod and immediately falls in love with her. At this point, he is betrayed and ends up on the run. From there, the show goes into a bunch of arcs which slowly start to build on each other, but, at least for the first few, stand mostly alone. The stories break down more or less like this. The first arc is Udu City. This is almost what I describe as the exploitation film arc, with Shiriko ending up in this dystopian city run more or less by street gangs who have bought off the government, complete with the gangs running gladiatorial combat arenas, with battles being fought in AT suits. This arc also introduces us to the main supporting characters in the cast. Arms dealer Gotho, thief and mechanic Vanilla, who is also the black guy in this scene, and Kakona, who is sort of the team's conscience, but the amount she actually contributes to the team varies depending on the arc and the scheme they're working on. During the latter portion of this arc, we are more properly introduced to Fianna, and we learn that she is a perfect soldier, or PS, created by a mysterious conspiracy for the reason. No, we don't actually get what the reason is. After the end of the Udu City arc, Chiriko and company end up parting ways, only to reunite again on the planet Kunmin, which is basically having their own version of the Vietnam War, with the high-tech, heavily equipped air mobile force, the Melkins, taking on a less equipped guerrilla army, the Vila. Chiriko is working as a mercenary for the Melkins, and Vanilla and company are running an off-base nightclub and bar. The difference is that the Gorilla Army is being backed by the Secret Society, which has an additional PS in addition to Fianna, Ypsilon. It doesn't actually help the Gorilla Army, but it sets up the driving conflict of the Ark. Aside from the direct conflict between the government and the rebels, there's also an undercurrent of the Gilgamesh government working with the Melkins to get Fianna. Ultimately, the Gilgamesh tries to screw over both Shiriko and Fianna, with the two of them running off together, and our civilian crew once again running off on their own. The next arc begins with Sirico and Fiona getting tracked aboard a mysterious derelict warship and ultimately ending up on the desert planet of Sunsa. Through all of this, they are stalked by the conspiracy and then later the Balorant government as the ship goes through a neutral zone between Balorant and Gilgamesh. On Sunsa, once again, Sirico and Fiona reunite with Gotho, Vanilla, and Kakona, who are now working with junk dealers who have been scrounging old military hardware from the wasteland this planet has been turned into over the course of this almost centuries-long war. 
As part of this arc, we learn that the former military outfit that Chirico is part of, the Red Soldier Shoulders, committed a military atrocity on this planet. Chirico wasn't a party to this atrocity, he was stationed elsewhere, but some of the junk dealers lost family in this atrocity, and they blamed Chirico anyway. The arc ends with the final battle against Ypsilon, and a tip from Colonel Wachina, the military officer who's been following Chirico over the course of this series. If Chirico wants to know what's going on and why all this is happening, he needs to go to the planet Quent. Quent is the show's final arc, and it's also unfortunately when things go well off the rails. Up to this point, the show has been a very grounded mecha series. Yes, it is faster than light travel without time dilation, but other than that, the show never really stepped into the weird. It all changes here. Without going into precise details, the show steps into some very crazy territory in the last few episodes that it never properly sets off and does not fit tonally with the rest of the story that we've gotten over the past few episodes. It's not exactly bad, but the show does go really crazy in a hurry. Also, the show has some problems with the writing of its female characters. The show makes a big deal over Fianna as being a perfect soldier, but with the exception of a few episodes on Kunmin and some episodes on the Derelict, she doesn't do much to show how she's how she merits that title. I mean, aside from being part of this genetic engineering project, she just doesn't do much. It's rather disappointing that half of her dialogue basically ends up becoming shouting Chiriko's name. It's not as grating as, say, Fushugi Yugi, but it is disappointing. I would have preferred and appreciated more if she been more of an action character and shown why she was a perfect soldier, why everyone was so interested in her as a character, and the writing just doesn't back that up. To make a modern film equivalent, it'd be like if Black Widow spent three and half to three quarters of Captain America the Winter Soldier calling out to Steve Rogers. Kakona asks for more direct acts with more direct agency than Fiona does, and ends the series as a far more developed character than she does. Again, considering that Fianna's nature as a perfect soldier is the reason why these governments are fighting over her, it is disappointing that she could be easily replaced with very large portions of the show, or the four large, large portions of the show, by a sexy lamp. Still, Votoms is one of those 80s real robot mecha anime that aren't talked about very much, but makes for interesting viewing. Its flaws are such that, if it was available for streaming legally, I would recommend that you stream it first, but it is definitely worth taking a look at. Now, this show was last licensed by Central Park Media, which has since died, and no one has licensed rescued it yet. Not even Discotech, and they put out all a Fist of the North Star, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe the Japanese rights holders aren't interested in the U.S. market right now? I don't know. I would be certainly be interested if this show were to get a new licensed rescued release, a new release from Discotech Media or someone similar, but at present, I don't know who'd put it out. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.